Hi, Wally Nichols with the Asset Guidance Group weekly update for the week ending July the 29th, 2022. What a week. A lot of, a lot of data came in, you know, and uh, that gives us information to make decisions and, and upon which we can base very good quality decisions. All right, you got to have patience. got to have patience through these turbulent times and uh, in, in order to manage the risk. And that's how we end up with, uh, you know, the great spectacular returns that we have in excess of the indexes. We have the history to prove it. Okay, last week we had a, a, a started a discussion, went through several elements, five or six elements, of an argument of, on why a lot of investors think advisors are unnecessary and our counter arguments as to why we think fiduciary advisors like us at Asset, like, like we are at Asset Guidance Group, Jared and I, uh, are of paramount importance to have in your life and, and to develop you a plan so that you can stay evergreen and know that you're going to navigate the probably turbulent waters uh, of your golden years into retirement so that you can have the best possible life that you deserve because you worked all those years to do it. Okay, so this week, let's finish the second half of that discussion. Another reason, number seven, fear of losing control. A lot of people think if they get an advisor, there's just no one driving the bus. They see the stock market can be volatile. It all looks like chaos. They feel they could suffer tremendous losses if they went away for a week and the markets tank. Or what if that, God forbid, the advisor went away and the markets tank, okay? They feel an advisor simply stands by and watches. And some of them, unfortunately, do that, okay? We don't here at Asset Guidance Group. We have an active planning philosophy, okay? So... The reality is that a lot of people are correct with a standby and watch because many advisors don't make trades without clients' approvals. They would make extraordinary efforts to reach the client, though. And a more practical approach, then, is the client would be using professional money management, okay, which is our, our motif here, and that, and that the managers, then, would be buying and selling in the background. And so somebody is actually driving the bus. The client could just choose to leave that bus and take another if they so choose, if they didn't like the outcome of those um, uh, of those uh, experiences, okay? A lot of people out there just feel like advisors are inexperienced. A lot of investors, investors feel the advisors new to the business, passed an exam, somehow qualified to offer advice. They're assuming advisors are stock pickers, which they see as a learned skill. Now, the reality is advisors are relationship managers, really, not stock pickers. They help the client hire money management firms, they're only paying the manager for the time they're in the program. But here's how we differ on those issues uh, here at Asset Guidance Group, is that we also, while we may look out and involve third parties, okay, and uh, certain managers, we actually have additional overlays on those, uh, on those areas. And we make decisions in accord with communication with clients to make sure that our models are, and our risk exposure are always in line with the client's risk tolerance. And then money management kicks in to avoid uh, the extremities that the, that the market environment sometimes presents, okay? Somebody's always at the wheel here. Sometimes you have to trim the sails a little bit uh, on the boat, all right? And so that's where we get into what's called discretionary authority and discretionary trading, okay? That could be an entire segment on its own. Now, number nine, the investor needs specialized advice, okay? A lot of people associate advisors with providing one type of advice. They have a good stock guy, but he's not a bond guy. So they think a generalist who works with all types of different uh, areas uh, can't help them. Uh, nothing could be further uh, from the truth. Just because people know uh, you, a little about a lot of things. They can also know a lot about a lot of things. And once you understand how these things work, it becomes part and parcel of how you go. And also, this is why we use uh, deep resources. We have deep resources behind us on several institutions, okay, uh, that, that we go to and discuss things. And it's not just uh, us. Uh, we're, we're the point at Asset Guidance Group, but we also have a plethora of, uh, of deeply knowledgeable professionals and institutional firms behind us that stands behind us. TD Ameritrade Schwab, okay, Charles Schwab, uh, just for one example, they have a just a deep, deep uh, uh, library of resources uh, uh, and uh, that, that we can access on a moment's notice or people that we can talk to on a moment's notice and square away issues. All right, let's wrap this up. It's running a little bit long, but I wanted to catch all 10. I liked it. It was good. 
Number 10, advisors don't pay attention or follow up. A lot of people think that advisors are just getting, uh, just in the business of getting paid on new accounts. They're gonna focus on uh, being salesmen, basically, just bringing in new business, bringing onboarding new clients, and then they forget them, ignore them, and then they focus attention on finding the next new client. That's that transactional motif uh, uh, in, a, in a lot of um, uh, areas, okay? Reality is that may be true in a lot of professions where you're only paying for new business, but in the financial services industry, by and large, we all run on asset-based pricing. So it's uh, in the, both the client and the advisor's best interest to create long-term relationships. And so last but not least, most people, a lot of investors just don't think that an advisor is like them. So they don't identify with the advisors they know. They feel they come from a different culture or economic background. Bottom line, they don't look like me, all right? The reality is that advisors come in all varieties and flavors. They just aren't looking hard. The investors just aren't looking hard enough. We uh, here at Asset Guidance Group, uh, Jared and I have a, a, a wide, wide background of experience uh, dealing with just innumerable types of backgrounds of consumers. Jared spent 10 years, okay, uh, helping people uh, re, you know, save their homes and, and, and rehabilitate their home mortgages and that nationwide. So uh, tens of thousands of people that he's helped uh, in his career background. I myself, uh, are, from a street level, have dealt with just innumerable, immeasurable, almost uh, a different variety of consumer retail type cases. So we uh, are not really, uh, I don't want to use chameleon in, in a pejorative sense, but in, to the extent that we can mold and put the client's best interest first, you know what it boils down to? Empathy. We've met enough people and we have enough character to have empathy for each client's situation, particular situation so that you can, uh, we can set ourselves in, advocate for the client and do the things, make the decisions and help the client plan with complete transparent disclosure in the client's best interest. Because after all, that's what it's all about, all right? Those are the reasons that you don't wanna jump a gun on a market like this. Everything is good, watch out. Watch that fear of missing out feeling because just because the market's trending up right now, okay? We may just be finding a nice, comfortable bottom or a little relief in the middle of the summer heat from that downtrend, okay? Um, money's, money's shoving and ru running into the market's been going up, but money's been running into bonds. So be careful. That's a flight to safety. That's what that tells us. You got to be patient. You got to look. You got to look at, at what the data say. Put our heads together. We'll make a winning portfolio that works for you and your family. And you know what that allows you to do? Have peace of mind. When you have peace of mind, sleep easy at night. Makes it easier to wake up happy. And we know that when you wake up happy and stay happy, that's the key to longevity.